Hello class and welcome to week 5 of Cognitive Psychology. This lecture video will serve the purpose as to reviewing your week 5 objectives as well as um, a brief overview of your project that is due this week. I think the main focus of this week will be that assignment. I know last week we spent um, quite a bit of time on the lecture, I mean on the um, chapters and the readings and it was a great uh, video. However, this time of course we have an assignment so I want to focus more on that. Um, I'll do a brief overview, but not as uh, detailed as last week. So let's jump right in. So for this week, you'll have to read chapters 8 and chapters 9 over imagery and language, um, as well as you have two supplemental um, uh, PowerPoints to go through, as well as a couple videos um, as per usual. Um, and then you'll have your lecture video for this week. You will also have your discussion board post and continuing to have at least 20, 200 words um, and responding to at least two classmates with a post of at least 50 words each. Now for the presentation. Um, so I wanted, like I said, I want to focus on this. So the main tenet of this assignment is basically to help you evaluate and analyze measures used for diagnostic categories. Um, so, and that's of course one of our learning goals for this week. Um, so the focus of this assignment should be, you should include what you've learned throughout the week's readings and assignments and instructional videos. So every um, PowerPoint that you have, every video, you can incorporate that, incorporate that into your PowerPoint presentation. So this assignment will be a 10 slide minimum PowerPoint presentation. Um, and it'll focus on the following situation. So at your church, there is a woman in, of the congregation whose child is struggling with language. This woman knows you are studying psychology and approaches you after church service with some questions. She is clearly concerned about her one-year-old daughter who is babbling and saying a few words like mama, dada, baba, and hi. The woman indicates she believes her daughter should be speaking in full sentences by now and is worried there might be something wrong with her development. As you listen to the woman's concerns, you believe, you're, you believe her daughter seems to be developing normal language skills given her age. You offer to provide some information about normal language development to help ease her fears. The woman is relieved and enthusiastic about your offer and asks if you would consider sharing this information with other parents of the church who have young children. You have agreed to t create a presentation regarding an overview of language. For this presentation, you will have you there should be eight slides of text, um, so not including your title slide and your reference slide. So minimum eight slides uh, for your main body of work, but minimum of 10, including your title and reference slide. Each slide can contain at least a minimum of three to four bullet points of content. Um, so I wanna pinpoint on that as well. And I think that a lot of times when we think of PowerPoint presentation, we think of short and sweet, um, just so we can jog our memory. However, this needs to be more detailed and more um, thorough with information. So I I am a stickler for this um, considering it is a, is a presentation that is providing not only information for the lay audience but for me to gather uh, what you grasp with the topic. So be sure to be more thorough uh, than you normally would uh, for PowerPoint presentations. Um, so like I said three to four bullet points of content um, complete sentences are not necessary, but the bullet points should c contain enough text and sufficient communication communication of your thoughts, like I mentioned before. Um, each slide should contain examples as well as visuals, graphics, um, and things to enhance your presentation. Um, please, of course, follow the below guidelines to structure your presentation. So the first slide should be your title slide. Um, that should have your name, the title of your um, presentation, and what other information that you want to provide for your title slide. It also should include an introduction. Um, this should be, you know, the overview of presentation, including the topic, the audience you're addressing, and why this presentation will be helpful um, to the audience that you're presenting it to. Next, three to, slides three to four um, will be a discussion on language comprehension. So these slides should discuss um, the gist uh, or an overview of how people understand language. So you have whatever you, whatever sources you've used or textbook to incorporate through to to provide a detailed um, explanation of how people understand language. Um, what are the components of language comprehension? Um, also, examples should be provided um, to enhance your thoughts. Um, 
and also your thoughts about how language comprehension might be applied in real life um, should be included. So if you want to incorporate, you know, personal examples or personal stories that will enhance this, um, your thoughts and uh, overall the, the presentation, that would be great as well. Um, slides five to six is on language production. So these slides will should discuss how people produce language. Um, and as I mentioned before, using your, your sources and your textbook and things like that to enhance um, this portion of your assignments. Um, what are the components of language production? Um, using examples and your personal thoughts and views on how language comprehension might be applied to real life. Um, and then similar to the other two sections is acquiring language. So these slides should also have detailed information on how people develop language, uh, how do babies learn language, um, how does language development uh, progress through one's lifespan. So what might that look like when someone's a baby and what might that look like when someone's um, middle aged and what might that look like when someone is an older adult. Um, so focus on those different levels of um, someone's lifespan um, and using examples and things like that for each, um, each time frame through li their lifespan. Um, and also your personal thoughts and views on how language acquisition might be applied to real life um, it should be included as well. And then lastly, for your the bulk of your assignment um, is a faith integration and conclusion. Um, so these this slide should discuss you know the the connection between what the Christian and what the Bible are and what God says about uh, of language and uh, how that those two connect. Um, what does this does the scriptures have to say? So providing examples um, via scripture or even. Um, if you found a research article that discusses this, um, providing that in there as well, that information and those examples, um, and, and ultimately discuss your concluding thoughts about language and the overall view, Christian worldview of it. And then lastly, you'll have your slide 10 um, with your references. So for this assignment, I'm asking that you include at least two peer-reviewed references that are not your textbook. Uh, so two articles that you found on um, through the portal, library portal, or even Google Scholar if you use that. Um, and then you can also use your textbook, but I do not want it to be the main tenet of your basis of information and knowledge. Um, you can use it um, to supplement your thoughts and uh, any material information that you can use to incorporate um, those peer reviewed sources as well. Um, so as I mentioned before, websites are not considered valid reference um, academic and academic academic work. Um, so I do notice sometimes that uh, uh, students may have um, an academic uh, website or something like that. That is not a, considered a reference. It needs to be a journal article. Um, so, and as I mentioned before, a great way place to find peer reviewed journal articles is through uh, the uh, the database provided the CBU's library website, and this is the link below. Um, if you were having trouble finding that, it is listed below here for you. Um, and here's the rubric, and this is basically how each section will be um, graded. Um, so if you have any um, concerns or things like that about where your points are going, this is exactly what I will be grading on. And if you notice, APA format is the same amount of points as it is each component. So that is very important as well. Make sure you are properly citing each um, slide. So every slide is going to have uh, a reference, um, whether that's at the bottom right hand corner of your slide or whether that's within integrated in the text of each um, um, bullet point. Make sure you are citing this because it is a huge important um, component into your presentation. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of the PowerPoint presentation that is due. I do think that um, these supplemental um, videos and things like that have great information. So I'm going to go ahead and open these 
PowerPoint presentations to see if there's anything that I want to discuss with you. As I mentioned before, it will be very brief because I don't want to spend too much time because you do have an assignment this week. Okay, so I do want to talk to you about this. What is language? Um, and this is part of your presentation, so this could be very important information. So uh, if you do um, find some sources or find some information here, it could be very useful for your assignment. So what is language? Um, language ultimately is used for multiple functions. Um, the structure of it, and I know a lot of people, whenever you're watching TV shows and things like that, you hear the word semantics a lot. Um, I know I've heard that quite a bit of times when I'm watching Netflix shows or whatever, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. So structure. Um, there's form, there's meaning, there's grammar, and there's use. Um, so in, in terms of form, phonology and orthography. Uh, excuse me if I butcher some of these words. I'm not. <laughs> um, sometimes I get it right, sometimes I get it right, but that's how it is. Um, so, phenomes. Um, so, there's you know sound elements. There's different languages are made up of different set of phenomes. Um, there is typically not a one to one correspondence between the sounds and the letters that make up a language. So, if you think about it, um, a lot of times whenever you have certain uh, words that have letters in it that do not sound um, specifically like that would be like for instance the word sign um, it's spelled s-i-g-n but it sounds like s-i-n-e um, so though that's what you would call a phenome um, and I know the textbook has a lot more thorough information on that, if you want to go through that um, to get gather more information like because as I mentioned before this is just a brief um, you can do that as well. Uh, morphology is the smallest presentation that conveys meaning and grammatical properties. Um, in some or most cases, what we think of as words are single morphemes, such a such as cow. Um, and also, in many cases, uh, words are made up of multiple morph morph morphemes. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so simple words um, were, and, and if you think back on how we learned um, syllables and things like that back in elementary school, cow, um, it's only one um, syllable and things like that. So that's similar to morpho morphology. Let's see, syntax. Um, and as I mentioned before, a lot of this stuff may be just a review for you guys. Um, so I don't like I said I don't want to spend too much time on some of these words and things like that. And here is something that also will be on your presentations. How do we process language? Um, Paul Broca, he was a important influencer into language and how we process. Language. He was a French physician, uh, anthropologist, and I think an anatomist as well. Um, and he was best known for his research in Broca's area, which is a region in the frontal lobe um, that is also, also named after him. Um, and this is the area of the brain that is involved with the language. Um, so he studied, you know, damage to the left inferior frontal cortex, problems with speech production, and intact speech production, or speech comprehension. So those are the things that he focused on and how we, and those are the areas that he considered how we process language. So like I said, a part of the brain is actually named after him. So he has a major impact on how we process language, how it's studied, and things like that. Um, he also de developed several neurosurgical methods that advance our ability to examine the brain post-mortem uh, and things like that. So he's responsible for the, say for instance, someone dies and, ex and exploring and um, examining their brain. He developed a lot of the ways that uh, we do that in modern, terms, in modern days now. In addition to Broca, uh, Carl Warnick, um, his name is also spelled with a C, but here it has it with a K. Um, he was a German physician, anatomist, psychiatrist, and neuropathologist. He is 
uh, mainly known for his influential research in the pathological effects of, I want to say, specific forms of um, encephalopathy, um, and also the study of receptive aphasia, both of which are commonly associated with uh, his name. Um, and I know those are big words and it's hard to <laughs> understand what that means. He basically studied and examined the damage to left posterior temporal lobes, um, problems with speech comprehension, and intact speech production. So, and that's also developed how he, um, how we process language and the important components of that. So moving on. Let's see, I don't think I want to spend much time on this um, because you guys, like I said, this is a brief, brief overview of this week's um, materials. So the main focus was the presentation and also of course acquiring language is another part, part of your presentation that I do want you guys to focus on as well um, whenever you are reading. So the, for acquiring language there's typical language development. Um, there is a great uniformity in the pattern of language development across language and the culture. So no matter what culture um, you are, no, no matter what language you speak, there is a, a uniform pattern of how that acquiring language works um, and it starts very early within the womb um, and language production typically lags behind language comprehension um, and and that spans like it says across all cultures and languages and that is it for this week's lecture um, like I said if you have any questions comments concerns please feel free to reach out to me uh, I am ready and available to answer any of your questions in terms of um, your assignments and things like that. I will post this lecture video uh, immediately. I know I was a little late today, um, but um, I have it up for you guys, and I will talk to you next week. Hope you have a great week, and good luck on your assignments.